These are four of the best smartphones money can buy in terms of camera performance. So today we'll be putting the iPhone 14 Pro Max up against the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, Google Pixel 7 Pro and Xiaomi 12s Ultra in this extremely detailed camera comparison where we'll be comparing day and night photos and videos. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is kitted with a 12 megapixel ultra wide telephoto and selfie camera, while the main camera is now bumped up to 48 megapixels. The Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra has a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, 108 megapixel main camera, two 10 megapixel telephoto cameras and a 40 megapixel selfie camera. The Google Pixel 7 Pro has a 12 megapixel ultra wide snapper, a 50 megapixel main camera, 48 megapixel periscope telephoto lens and a 10.8 megapixel selfie camera. And last and certainly not least, we have the Xiaomi 12S Ultra with two 48 megapixel cameras for the ultra wide and periscope cameras, not to mention an insane 50 megapixel massive one inch sensor size main camera. And of course we also have a 32 megapixel selfie camera. Will the iPhone's new main camera sensor stand out? Will the Samsung's high megapixel count make all the difference? Will the Pixel's software implementation change the game? Or will the Xiaomi's massive one inch main sensor put all else to shame? This is Tech Nick, and without further ado, let's find out. What's up guys, this is Technic recording a selfie video on four of the best smartphone cameras that we've seen in 2022 thus far. Let me know your take on the video quality as well as the microphone quality, considering that the iPhone, Samsung and Pixel are all running at native 4K 60fps, while the Xiaomi 12S Ultra is capped at 1080p and 30fps when using the selfie camera. For selfie video, the iPhone takes the lead in quality and optical stabilization. The Pixel is just as stabilized and the Xiaomi falls short. It's disappointing the Pixel lacks portrait selfie video, the Samsung looks the best with incredible color accuracy and edge detection, the iPhone's not far off but is a tad oversaturated and the Xiaomi is completely washed out. As for selfie photos, the Pixel looks the most natural, the iPhone has the best exposure, the Xiaomi is always cropped out and lacks focus and the Samsung crops out at native 40 megapixel mode. The Samsung looks better when binned down and provides a nice middle ground between the iPhone and Pixel. When they are all cropped out, the Samsung again has a nice middle ground when binned. The Pixel still looks the most accurate and the Xiaomi has a long way to go. As for portrait selfies, the iPhone looks the best here because it doesn't have an ultra wide portrait mode, which leaves the Samsung as the clear winner. And because the Xiaomi only shoots ultra wide selfie portraits, the iPhone has the best edge detection the Pixel has the worst, and the Samsung has a good balance between detail and depth. Moving on to back cameras, the iPhone and Samsung use their telephoto sensors for optical zoomed portraits, while the Pixel and Xiaomi use their main sensors for digital zoom. When taking portraits with the main cameras, the Pixel crops in and is a bit of a mixed bag, the Samsung is underexposed, the Xiaomi is oversaturated but has the most accurate edge detection, while the iPhone has a large depth of field with everything in focus resulting in no portrait effect at all. Moving on from portraits to regular photos, the Pixel has great dynamic range. The iPhone pops in detail, the Samsung is slightly underexposed, and the Xiaomi is extremely underexposed when binned down. However, when shooting at native 50 megapixels, the Xiaomi is overexposed, the iPhone and Samsung become more dull at their native resolution, while the Pixel cannot shoot photos at its native megapixel count at all, always resulting in binned down images. Images. Taking a closer shot of me, the iPhone and Pixel naturally stand out, whereas the Samsung struggled with a tonal range resulting in my face matching the color of the wall, and the Xiaomi struggled with auto ISO levels, not to mention it has natural depth of field even when not set to portrait mode. Switching over to portrait mode, now the Xiaomi has difficulty with tonal range and the Samsung has improved. Overall the iPhone looks great and the Pixel pops with detail due to its crop in factor. All of them have more than decent edge detection. Taking a photo of an object, focusing on the lights of this traffic light, it's clear that the iPhone and Pixel know what they're doing in terms of separating detail from light noise. And the same can be said when taking a portrait shot, especially when taking a look at the yellow pole. They all have great background blur, but the background on the iPhone seems a bit patchy. Back to the shot we took earlier. 
When cropping in by 400%, I think we can all agree that the iPhone is the clear winner with the Pixel being a close second. Now, some of you may remember this photo from my recent social media posts and polls, where most of you voted for option A, which happens to be the iPhone. I must say I agree since the iPhone does the best job overall when considering all elements of this photo. However, when cropped in, I feel that the Xiaomi packs in the most detail. In this shot, the Samsung once again has issues with tonal range. The Xiaomi is under exposed, the pixel is a bit dim, and the iPhone is on point even when the weather is overcast. This is the most noticeable when cropping in, but it's worth mentioning that the pixel handles the light in the lamp post the best. In this next shot, the pixel looks the most natural, but I really like how the Xiaomi has played with the colors, exposure, and dynamic range in this photo, giving it a nice rich tone, which you can clearly see when cropping in. But when looking at the box, due to the iPhone over sharpening the image, it gives it the upper hand in terms of detail. With this photo, the colors really pop on the Samsung and Xiaomi, but with the iPhone and Pixel looking more natural, the colors of the sky come out more accurately. And when cropping in, saturation aside, the Xiaomi shows a lot more detail within color, as you can see when looking at the red bricks. Now here's the same photo with all phones set to their native resolution, but once again, the Pixel has no option for this. And when cropping into these high resolution images, it's clear that the 108 megapixel Samsung sensor outperforms on every level, which you can obviously notice when switching back to the binned photo and then back again to the native crop. And when taking macro shots, all phones default to their ultra wide sensors, leaving the Xiaomi with an underexposed image, the Pixel and Samsung slightly overexposed, and the iPhone looking the most natural. Speaking of ultra wide sensors, the Xiaomi is the only device here with a high megapixel count and can shoot at native 48 megapixels, leaving it with a touch of saturation. The Samsung is completely oversaturated though, giving it a surreal look, while the iPhone and Pixel might look a bit dull, but look the most realistic. Binning down the ultra wide shots on the Xiaomi to match the rest of the phones, it tends to add more saturation, with the Pixel and iPhone showing a good amount of detail. Aside from the Pixel, taking a native shot with the mains, the Xiaomi sits comfortably between the iPhone and Samsung. When binning down, the Pixel has the most natural balance and level of detail. Moving on to zooms, the iPhone and Samsung's telephone photo sensors kick in at three times, giving them the edge here. The Pixel and Xiaomi's periscope sensors come in at five times zoom, and while the Xiaomi can shoot at native 48 megapixels, the Pixel cannot. The strange thing is that the Xiaomi's level of detail increases when binning down to 12 megapixels, giving the Pixel a run for its money. Zooming into 10x, the Samsung clearly has an advantage here, since it's the only one with a second telephoto sensor, that being periscope of course, with an impressive 10x optical zoom. 15x zoom is the maximum zoom level of the iPhone, and to be honest, just as well, since it definitely is not the best photo here. 30 times zoom is the max zoom for the Pixel, and while it does a great job, I feel that Samsung captures more detail in it. The Samsung and Xiaomi both have 50 times digital zoom options, but it's pretty obvious who takes the win here. At 100 times zoom, the Samsung still looks better than the Xiaomi, but this is where the Samsung unfortunately caps off, leaving us with the Xiaomi reaching a maximum zoom of 120x and a very bad oil painting. Here's another set of photos from ultra wide to max optical zoom. And while they all take flagship leading photos on all sensors, the fact that the Samsung has more flexibility with three times and 10 times optical zoom, not to mention its level of detail, even when zooming in digitally, gives it the edge in terms of high quality zoom. But let's not neglect the fact that the Xiaomi does a fantastic job too, even with the lack of a second telephoto sensor. Moving on to video, the Xiaomi is the only one that can shoot 8K using its telephoto sensor. The Samsung can also shoot in 8K, but it uses its main sensor. However, all of them can shoot 4K 60fps video using their telephoto sensors. In terms of main video, the Xiaomi and Samsung can shoot at 8K, but the Samsung does crop in by default, giving it a slight advantage in level of detail. They can all shoot 4K 60fps video using their main cameras, and it's really good to see how the Androids are finally catching up to the iPhone in terms of video quality. The iPhone and 
and Samsung have the fastest focus, but the iPhone and Xiaomi have the most detail. They all have portrait video modes, but while the Xiaomi caps at 720p, the Pixel and Samsung can reach 1080p, and the iPhone goes all the way up to 4K, giving it the highest level of detail. But the Samsung still looks the most natural. Now in terms of stability, without any stability modes enabled here, all of them recording at 4K 60fps, I think the iPhone and Pixel are slightly, but I mean slightly more stable than the Samsung and Xiaomi. Honestly, they're all extremely stable and all pack in fantastic detail. When enabling their stability modes, all of them kick to their ultra wide sensors. The Xiaomi and Pixel cap out at 1080p 30fps, the Samsung at 1080p 60fps, and the iPhone goes all the way up to 2.8K 60fps, which gives it once again an advantage in terms of detail, but the Samsung is still very stable. Stability aside, the Xiaomi is the only device that can record 8K ultra wide video, but to be honest, I don't really think it's necessary. They can all record ultra wide video at 4K 60fps, but it's so hard to decide which looks best here. So please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Switching over to night videos, starting with ultra wide, you can immediately see the Xiaomi is the darkest, but that's because it's recording at 8K. Dropping it to 4K to match the rest has the opposite effect as it is now the brightest. That said, I'll be leaving all night videos at 30fps or lower since that seems to be the sweet spot for night videography. Moving on to their stabilization modes, they're just as stable as we saw in daylight. However, when using them at night, the iPhone is the darkest but the least grainy and the Pixel and Xiaomi have the most grain but are the brightest. When stability modes are disabled and video is set to 4K using the mains, things are a lot brighter across the board, with the Xiaomi being the brightest but in turn suffers from the most light noise. Sticking to main cameras with the Samsung and Xiaomi both set to 8K, the crop in on the Samsung is actually a disadvantage this time round, with the Xiaomi looking a lot more crisp. When they're all set to 4K, the iPhone handles its dynamic range and light intensity really, really well, as you can see in the restaurant's sign. The Xiaomi is the only phone here with an option for night video, and when enabled, it does crop in a bit, but adds in more light and detail. When recording portrait video at night, none of them look great. The iPhone doesn't always blur the background, the Samsung is very grainy, the Pixel has some serious focusing issues, and the Xiaomi doesn't have the best edge detection, but it has the most detail when close up overall. Moving on to portrait photos, using the telephoto sensors on the iPhone and Samsung. It's kind of hard not to giggle at the iPhone. The Samsung is okay, the Pixel is too sharp, and the Xiaomi is too smooth. Taking portraits using the mains fixes most of their issues. The iPhone has the best edge detection now, but looks quite dull, while the Samsung's colors pop the most. With portrait mode off and night mode off as well, I really think the Samsung does the best overall job in terms of color, detail, and light. With night mode on, it's doing what it's meant to do on all phones, but I still personally think the Samsung stands out the most. Unfortunately, there was a car's red brake light shining on me in the Xiaomi photo, but the rest of the photo still looks pretty great. Moving on to objects with night mode off, the Xiaomi undoubtedly looks the best overall due to it having the largest main sensor. It is worth noting that the Pixel adds a bit of a blue tint to its white balance, but with night mode on, the blue is gone. The iPhone and Samsung seem to brighten up the most and the Xiaomi the least, but that's because it takes a great photo even with night mode off. Taking a snap of the spectacular Rolls Royce with night mode off, it's interesting to see how each phone handles white balance with the Xiaomi being the best and the Pixel being the worst. This time with night mode on, the Xiaomi brightens things up a lot more compared to the photo we took earlier of the red pipes. The white balance of the Xiaomi is still on point, the Pixel and Samsung improve their white balance, but the iPhone still looks a tad too warm. Focusing on light with night mode off, the Pixel does a fantastic job in controlling light noise of the light scene on the roof in the distance, while the iPhone and Samsung suffer from light noise here. All three of them blow out the lights on the sidewalk but the Xiaomi doesn't seem to control any of the lights well. However, with night mode on, the Xiaomi not only fixes up its light noise issues, but does such a detailed job, you could almost count the little light bulbs individually. When it comes to ultra wide with night mode off, it's easy to see how bad the Xiaomi's ultra wide sensor suffers from poor auto ISO levels. The iPhone is not far off, with the Samsung and Pixel really bringing out the highlights. All of them suffer from light noise here within the lamp posts, but the Xiaomi is by far the worst. But when night mode 
kicks in, the Xiaomi looks fantastic. It controls the light noise perfectly, it fills the tree's leaves with color and detail, and it even goes as far as to add more detail and depth to shadows. Even with night mode off using the main camera, this time the Xiaomi actually controls light noise the best thanks to that huge main sensor. The Pixel is the brightest, while the iPhone and Samsung are the most dim. Switching to night mode, the iPhone and Samsung certainly brighten up, the Xiaomi is now the brightest and the most colorful, not to mention it goes even further to control light noise. All of you who vote Voted for option D in my social media post and poll, your vote goes to the Xiaomi and so does mine. When zooming in by three times with night mode off, the iPhone and Samsung use their telephoto sensors whereas the Pixel and Xiaomi are still using their mains. When comparing telephotos, the Samsung does a better job in the foreground while the iPhone does its best work in the background. With night mode on at three times, the iPhone fixes up its foreground while the Samsung fixes up its background. The Xiaomi and Pixel kick in their periscopes at five times zoom and while the three photos on the left look brighter, the Xiaomi actually stands out the most here with incredible dynamic range when night mode is off. But with night mode on, that natural dynamic range on the Xiaomi fades away in order to brighten up the shots, while the Pixel focuses more on improving color accuracy. At 10 times zoom, the Samsung is the only one that can zoom optically at this range, but the Pixel looks the sharpest and the Xiaomi looks the most natural. 10 times is the highest zoom that night mode can be enabled for the Samsung in Xiaomi and with night mode on, the Xiaomi brightens up and sharpens, the Pixel slightly softens, the Samsung fixes its grain and the iPhone is left in the dust. 15 times is the max zoom for the iPhone and while it does a decent job with night mode off, it struggles once again with night mode on. 30 times is the max zoom for the Pixel and is the only phone here that supports night mode at 30 times zoom, but to be honest, it doesn't make a huge difference. Both the Samsung and the Xiaomi support 50 times digital zoom, but neither of them support night mode at this level. That said, the Samsung is more clear, more detailed, and controls light better. 100 times zoom is the max for the Samsung, but it still outshines the Xiaomi. And while the Xiaomi can reach up to a maximum of 120 times zoom, it still loses out to the level of detail on the Samsung. Taking selfies at night with night mode off looks pretty average across the board. With night mode on, the iPhone warms up its colors, the Samsung sharpens up, and the Pixel remains the same. Ultra wide selfies with night mode off look the best on the iPhone and Pixel, while the Xiaomi shows the biggest improvement when night mode is enabled. The Samsung takes the crown when it comes to ultra-wide portraits because it's the only one that supports night mode in portrait mode. The Samsung also takes the lead in 1x portrait mode, but all of them fall short to the Pixel when the flash is on in portrait mode. It's not quite advisable to use selfie portrait video at night, but if I had to choose, it would be between the Samsung and Pixel. Recording 4K video using the selfie cameras at night is by far the best on the Samsung Samsung in terms of quality and stability. So this is what selfie video looks like on all four phones at night. Let me know your thoughts on the video quality as well as the mic quality, just as we started at the start of the video. So to sum things up in a nutshell, based on my personal and professional opinion and experience, even though your opinions may differ, so please don't kill me in the comment section down below, I feel that overall the iPhone takes the most consistent videos and has the best stabilization. The Samsung Samsung is the most consistent with zoomed shots and takes the best native resolution main photos. The Xiaomi takes the best bin down main photos across the board and has the most effective night mode option and the Pixel is the most consistent across all of its own main camera sensors. Please let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section down below. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it and a huge shout out to all of you who participated in my teaser social media posts prior to this video. This is Technic and I'll catch you in the next one.